Well, blessings to you guys this October 19, 2018. And I think we were in one of our last hot spells down here in Howell. <laughs> yeah, just climbed out of the pool here in Hope Sound, Florida, and it's 7.30 at night, and I checked the water temperature. It's 88 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, it's hot, but soothing light exercise. You know, I need it, so it's my time to think, time to reflect, and maybe go on and try to give some encouragement, if I can, to my friends and both on the Facebook or other places and then on the emails sending out the emails to friends encouraging only because of the many ways the Lord has shown mercy toward me and there are many ways he's shown mercy to me and I was born in 1947 I'm 71 years old an unwanted child laid at the foot of a Catholic orphanage in West Hartford, Connecticut. It was about uh, a year before two angels came and lifted me up, kissed me, and blessed me with their lives. Their names were Peter and Jenny Sosowski. She a simple housewife, he a factory woodworker. Was that God or not? No, not at people around me, well, they, they say it was such and such. But in my heart, I know it was God. So I guess there's one major thing I've learned in the years that passed and is that every Christian who's thankful for the mercy shown him has then the opportunity to influence the brutal, corrupt world around them for a positive view of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, because, you know, even in the most limited sense, we can present the gospel in a way useful to the Holy Ghost, where he can then come in and plant those living seeds, those truth-giving seeds in the hearts of every human. Every human's foundational belief system is affected by the Holy Spirit when the gospel comes at them. So, there are so many fertile minds, you know, around. You'll find us as you're going through life many fertile minds that are fallow, they're not being used. And when you plant something there, you can watch, you can wait, and you can listen to what people say on their own when they receive the gospel. And most times, you know, you hear them repeat some of the concepts and principles that you open to them. They work their idle minds and they begin to sow this, they begin to cultivate, you know. They began to repeat what you showed them some time ago as if it was their own idea. And in such time, it's best just to remain silent, I guess, and let them go on and on and on and on about what they're saying. <laughs> but is that God? I think so. I think it's God because you find people, they all must build some kind of foundation in their life. You know, if young people have a lot of mush they have a lot of straw and wood, hay, and stubble. You'll find this in your young people you meet. For that system, see they're building. They're building a foundation and once it's formed, it sets the direction of that building. And that building can be uh, thought of as that person's life. It's their life. A good life, an evil life, an indifferent life, passion, tragedy set for blessing, set for cursing, whatever it is, every person must build their own house. Think about that. In their own lifetime. And Christians, that's you, who will receive the blessed assurance of Christ being alive and real. You Christians can do good in this world by giving them some stones, some simple gospel that good news, that fuel that the Holy Spirit can use as they sleep and rise and pray and rise again and the days go by and use, it uses, the Holy Spirit uses these stones you've given them to preach to them in a way that our physical voices, yours and mine, can never, ever 
do or replicate. What each Christian does is in fact the Lord's work, not ours. You know that stuff. What shall it be for? You could call a relative or a friend, you send a card, you call somebody up. That's a work, I guess. It's not too important to you or me, but it's a seed. Not too much. Passing out a track, witnessing. That brings for some a lot of interesting and fun experiences, I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, when you go out and you meet strangers, but a lot of folks don't do that. That's okay, you know. And, but as we go, me, I personally try to never think of it as an activity of doing something, doing something for the Lord. I don't think like that. I don't really kind of gotten beyond it because I, I know it's got to be more. It's, it's not any more than our habit of lifting. You know, when you go to church or you're in a meeting or a service, you're lifting your heart, your hands in worship. It's kind of, for me, I guess, a kind of a worship thing. Worship service. Not as anything special. It's just throwing seeds. The witnessing part of it is like a short hour of worship. Nothing more. Because that too passes. But things happen. You know, seeds that belong to you, they have no choice but to grow. You know, time goes by. Your house is being built. Seeds are growing, whether they be good seeds or evil seeds or indifferent or idle or tragic or blessing. They have no choice but to grow. I just want to turn now just to leave you guys with one scripture here in Mark chapter 4, verse 23. Then, of course, I always ask you, <laughs> then stop <laughs> and think about these things. If any, it says here in, in chapter 4, verse 23, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear, for what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall be more given. Yeah, it's true. Verse 25 says, For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not for him shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And he says, So is the kingdom of God. If a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise, day and night, and the seed should spring up and grow, he knows not how. But the earth bringeth forth fruit of itself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it's sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be there in the earth. But when it's grown, and when it's sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs, and shoots out great branches so the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. You know, God bless you this week. I just want you to think that even the little things that you're doing for the Lord, don't think of them as doing, but think of them as being. You're being in Him. You're worshiping Him. It's part of you. It's part of your life. God bless you this week. Have a real good week. In Jesus' name. Amen.